This month, we had a lot of really different approaches to the warm, cool contrast that I wanted to share. And I also really wanted to take a moment to showcase Amanda's experiments that she's been working on that many have seen in the Slack channel and on the podcast episodes throughout the past couple of months on warm and cool primaries. It has been so inspiring to watch her work unfold, and this is a great opportunity to share it here in one place for future reference. All right, let's get into it this month. So in part one of our warm cool contrast discussion, we left off with some ideas about how to combine warm and cool colors in projects. Specifically, the proportions of warm to cool colors matters. More cool colors are needed to balance warm colors in a composition. Next, we discussed how we can control the overall warmth or coolness of a finished yarn when we are blending from existing colors. We've seen this again and again in our community samples that everyone has been making. And as well, we can help colors to pop or to recede in our work by pairing them with other colors that allow them to exhibit these characteristics. We can add a zinger to our work and help a piece really come alive, usually by choosing a color from the opposite side of the color wheel. If we have a design filled with lovely cool blues, we might choose from a warm side of the color wheel, like an orange or a yellow, to add interest and depth to our piece. And lastly, we can add a tint, a shade, or a tone to our colors to liven things up even more. Looking for a muddy, a brown muddy orange, this is a wonderful way to play with color by adding small increments of black, white, or brown to our colors. We can and should play with this stuff all day to learn all the nuances there are to all of this color play. So for my experiments this month, I really wanted to understand the warm and cool colors that I have in my stash of Corydale to play with throughout this year. I have several blues, reds, and yellows. Because I knew I was having trouble seeing the undertones of each, whether they were warm or cool, I decided to make some small one gram samples of all the shades from beginning, from, to begin building my own library of samples. I had started this work last month with the shade scale of orange and I wanted to go back a step to build the basics first. For those completely new to spinning and creating color, I used my drum carter and weighed out the increments that I needed to create these sample skeins. I found it faster and I was able to make several nests of fiber to spin all at once, which helped to get the sampling done in a timely fashion. More on these scales next month as I am continuing to spin and play. In the meantime, I also wanted to see if I could create a warm, cool contrast yarn itself. How would I be able to play with the idea of that contrast within the yarn itself? It's harder than it sounds, but I got to thinking and I used the resources in Menz's books as my jumping point, since she shares an exercise to create a warm, cool contrast yarn. So I decided to create four yarns that would be slightly different, even if not terribly different. I started with a few different colors, not at all what I thought I would have done, but I love the results. First, I chose the three reds that I have in my Year of Color stash, including a crimson, a scarlet, and raspberry. From warm to cool, the order of these reds is scarlet, crimson, and then raspberry. For the cool contrast, I chose cerulean, 
Then for the cool yarn, I chose Cerulean, Royal, and Dream, which is also the order from warm to cool for these blues. The contrast from the reds that I chose for this yarn was the crimson. My original plan was just to spin two contrasting yarns, one with a cool contrast blended in and another with a warm contrast blended in. Think of them like a warm yarn with a cool contrast and a cool yarn with a warm contrast. Lots of humbug combed tops do this with varying success. Then I decided to make things interesting by creating two yarns of each to see what would happen when I changed the ratio of the contrast color. So I actually added two extra yarns. For the first yarn, I weighed out equal parts of fiber from all four colors in 0.5 gram bundles. For the second yarn, for each contrast, I decreased the overall amount of warm or cool fiber to 0.5 to five grams each and increased the warmer cool contrast to 1.5 grams of fiber. So this completely changed the, yarn, changed the yarns and was so much fun to see. So for the first yarns, the warm or cool contrast was only 25% of the total yarn, but in the second yarn, the contrast was a full 50%. So this is a huge difference and you can definitely see it in the yarns, which I'll show you in just a sec. So this was how I organized all of my fiber. And you can see on the left-hand side here that there's only 0.5 grams of each of the fibers. So all four colors in both of those two yarns on the left there is only 0.5 grams. And then you can see on the far right there that I have 50-50. So there's 50% um, of the contrast and then 50% of the main colors. So very, very interesting difference. And this is what they look like after I have blended them up. So you can see here right below my finger here is the 50-50 um, blue uh, contrast red versus blue, uh, warm versus cool contrast. And then next to it is the 25% uh, blue which was the cerulean color. And then on the other side of that is the 25% red. And then on the far end is the 50-50. So the main takeaway from this sampling is the following. So the warm red skein, which is the one up here at the very top with only 25% cool contrast, here was the cerulean, is still quite saturated, but more interesting as a result. I think this yarn would be more interesting as a yarn in a project than say a solid colored yarn since there would be more nuance and depth, more texture and interest, but not so much that it would compete with the patterning in a garment or a woven item. I can totally see that yarn in a sweater. The warm skein that's 50% cool contrast, again, the cerulean was, was again, the cerulean was the contrasting uh, cool color. It was starting to appear purple, a warm purple, but the beginnings of a purple. It's placed, uh, if it was placed with something quite cool, like a, a, a blue yarn for color work, say, I think that this would be quite a cool red. The third yarn down is the blue yarn with 25% uh, red crimson. Sorry, it's the one at the very, very bottom is the 25% red crimson. Um, it had a very purple undertone to it as well. It didn't stay quite as true to color as the 25% red skein, but, and I wonder if that was the range of the blue and the blue green that I used in this yarn. So the Cerulean, the Dream, and the Royal. I thought about swapping out either the Dream or the Cerulean with the Sapphire, but I wanted to see what might happen with this sort of broader range of color. I'm glad that I didn't, but now I'm wondering about adding another two sample skeins to this experiment to round it out a bit. It would have made the cool yarn more closely related to the warm yarn if two blues had been closer. So if you see here in the original sampling here, um, do you see how my reds are all like very, very similar and they're also the same saturation, whereas my blues, there's much more of a contrast in value and they're all quite different. And the cerulean does have some yellow added to it, which makes it warmer because it's sort of getting toward a teal, a blue green. 
So if I had swapped that out for Sapphire or maybe left the Cerulean and gotten rid of the Dream, which is so light in contrast, it would have made these two yarns uh, more like comparing apples to apples versus apples to oranges. The final 50% crimson yarn is very whiny red colored. Um, that's the one at the very, very bottom there. Um, again, I think we are seeing the range of blues against the crimson that brings the yarn to a slightly warmer side of the color wheel. As we learned earlier this month, these red violets can be hard to place on the warm versus cool side of the color wheel, and I can absolutely see why. This was a really interesting experiment and I recommend anyone try it to see what you might be able to make. I would love to see your results in the Year of Color thread on Ravelry or on the Slack channel and I will share them on the podcast in the future. One of the ways I started to be able to see the warm and cool undertones of colors was through the color wheel projects that many of us have been working on. I've mentioned my naturally dyed color wheel on the podcast, but I've been sort of saving it to discuss it here in our month of warm, cool contrast, because this was when I really started to be able to see this stuff more clearly. So I'm still learning and feeling more and more confident all the time. But as I mentioned in part one this month, it takes a lot of practice. So if we look at the naturally dyed color wheel that Linda of Color Storms made for us to explore, you will note that the magenta and the blue are quite cool. They aren't warm like some of the other colors I've been working with, like the warm reds and the warm yellows. The yellow was really hard for me to put my finger on immediately, but the more I worked with it and looked at the other yellows that I had, the more I could see that it was a cool yellow as well. You guys know how much I love yellow and beginning to see the warmth and coolness in yellow compared to other yellows feels very freeing. We had discussed this color wheel last month in terms of its value scale, but now let's look at it in terms of coolness. Next to another color wheel that I made, this one is quite cool. So that's this one here. And notice how the colors mix slightly differently than in the other color wheel due to the difference in the undertones. Simply, the commercially dyed CMYK color wheel is much more saturated. And look at how much warmer that yellow is against the slightly cooler yellow that I used in the CMYK color wheel just below. Although it is very subtle and definitely more uh, pronounced in real life, the yellow is slightly cooler in undertone versus the warm okra yellow that I spun up in these, value, in these color wheel. Uh, scales. Isn't that interesting? Look at those two yellows and how different they are. The uh, yellow over in the CMYK color wheel that is commercially dyed is a lot warmer, that yellow. But then down here, the naturally dyed uh, yellow that was the, it was dyed with apple bark. It's much, much cooler. And you can see how uh, it blended really nicely with the magenta and the blue because they were both very, very cool in their undertone. The commercially dyed CMYK on the Corydale worked really well too because those colors were, um, the, the, um, the cyan and the magenta were, were both cool. Um, and that yellow compared to another yellow that I'll show you in a few minutes was also cool in comparison to some of the other yellows that I had in my, in my stash that I used. When we go back to the CMYK color wheels, it may be more pronounced uh, now that the color is cool compared to another yellow that I could have chosen to put in its place. And because all the colors in the CMYK color wheels, both naturally and commercially dyed, had cool undertones, the color wheels work really nicely and there's a nice cohesion to both of them. In contrast though, this one right here, the naturally dyed and commercially dyed red in these color wheels was warmer. So here is one of the color wheels that was the RYB color wheel. And you can see it's that same yellow from the naturally dyed uh, color wheel just below me here. And it's the same blue. But now we're gonna look at this CM, the RYB color wheel um, instead of the CMYK color wheel. So I noticed that the warm red did not blend with the cool yellow quite as well. The undertones were different and the resulting color isn't quite orange, but instead it's more of a brown. That's this one down below. The cool yellow and blue were blended together to create a beautiful green and the purple worked nicely between the cool blue and the warmer red. But I would see, 
I would I would love to see another cool red and warm blue added to this mixture to see how this might change the color wheel and deepen it, adding more richness. And you can see over there the RYB color wheel, the uh, cool red next to uh, blended with the uh, warm warmer yellow again it didn't really work in the orange it's okay um, but it's actually quite red when you see it knit up so here is one of my experiments that I did that was a shade scale all the way to black and you can see that on your right hand side uh, which is over there I have the cooler yellow and then right below me here is the warmer okra yellow so they were labeled differently and it's very very subtle how these uh, yarns change and how the yellow uh, changes very, very subtly. It, it's almost, um, to the untrained eye, you almost wouldn't even be able to see that there's a difference between these two yellows. But the yellow that's further away from me, that's on your right hand side of your screen, is the yellow that I used for my CMYK and my RYB color wheels. So this warmer yellow, it makes me wonder if I were to substitute it in, how that would change the colors. Another experiment would be to use brown for my shade scale and to see how the warm chocolate brown changes the colors as they move from pure hue to the brown. Gray would work as well. The possibilities are endless and that takes us beautifully into our explorations with the community. Many have been posting their experiments in various places on the Slack channel and the Ravelry group. For those wishing to do the monthly experiments to, that I assign, please send me a message and I will add you to the Slack channel called hashtag spinning pearls. It is a private channel, that's why I have to add you. That is where the monthly homework goes out about a month to a month and a half in advance for anyone who is wishing to participate and see their work here in Spinning Pearls. So this is the call that I placed for May. For me, I'd love to see skeins or samples that focus on the subtleties of color within the warm and within warm and cool. Can you explore how a color leans one way or another, usually shown best by comparison with another similar color? What about undertones? Can you create a warm set of colors and a cool set of colors? These are just some ideas to get you started. Good luck. So let's see what you guys came up with. Um, it was very cool to see everything this month. So, first, here are some interesting experiments by Alberto. Uh, looking at the May color challenge, warm and cool, I realized that I had a cool color wheel and a warm one. So I pulled 50-50 mixes out of the primaries. I'm not ready to start spinning up skeins, even tiny ones until May, but from the videos I've watched, which were multiple, sometimes determining warm versus cold is subjective. My picture shows warm on the left and cool on the right. And you can see that the green doesn't come across strong on the cool side as the yellow was such a contrast to the dark blue and that's actually what happened Alberto with mine um, with the contrast uh, the difference in in value as um, between my red and my yellow for my RYB color wheel for the naturally colored color wheel I'll see if I can pull that up here for uh, just so that you guys can see that you can see here that the difference between that red and the cool yellow, that warm red and the cool yellow, it is such a stark difference that it doesn't really blend very well to make a very good orange. And that's of course what we see. Dominique has been busy at work with a lot of experimentation as well. I made four different greens from cool to warm yellow and cyan blue. Uh, and her warm and cool samples of yellow and green and a hexagon flower using some of these blends. That's very cool, Dominique. Thank you for sharing. And then her next samples on color temperature. So here it was from a warm red to a cool red. Hang on, wrong photo. Here was a, a color temperature. So from warm red to a cool red, which was the magenta. Um, from left to right, it was a 100% warm red, then 90, 75, 50%, 25, 10, and then 100% magenta. Um, the differences are clear in real life, but hard to capture with a camera. And I think that's partially because it's so hard to uh, photograph uh, magenta on the on our cameras. It's, it's really difficult. 
And then apart from maybe red, orange, and cyan turquoise, which for me are the warmest and coolest colors, all the others can be warm or cool in comparison with neighboring colors. The coolest of this set becomes the warmest of the next where the sample started from cool red or magenta and then contains 10, 25, 50, 75, 90, and finally 100% blue. So that's the second photo there. So cool. Thank you for sharing all of that, Dominique. That's this one here. And then Dominique also shares um, more of her yellow gradients. So that is here. Cool and warm yellows. I started with yellow, which is in the center, and added 5, 10, and 20% of the cyan, the left side of the picture, to make cool yellows. And then just a small amount has a big impact. And then the same experience of 5, 10, and 20% of the magenta to obtain warm yellows that you can see on the right side of the original yellow. I love this so much because look at that almost peachy orangey yellow that she was able to, to get um, on the far right hand side there. It is just beautiful. So thank you, Dominique. And then finally, Dominique took it one step further with a really interesting take to see if she could get the warm colors to pop and the cool colors to recede. And this also starts us down the path of simultaneous contrast, which is very cool. And that's coming up in August. So this is what she tried to do. Finally, I tried to see if warm colors pop and cool recede by making some kind of thick and thin orange cyan samples. Thick spots of the contrasting colors over a thin background. I am nowhere in art yarn, but these samples are awful. Uh, those samples are awful, but I can see in both cases, especially the one with less orange, that the, pop, the orange pops over the cyan. Very cool. Thank you, Dominique, for sharing all of that. So Amanda shares her homework from May's warm, cool contrast here. Um, for May, we were asked to look at a subtle contrast between warm and cool. For this exercise, I took two reds, the warm and cool red variants from my co-primary palette, and laid them side by side on the blending board and prepped them as three small roll eggs of roughly even weight. I spun each of these samples as separate singles and then plied them together, sort of matching, uh, starting from matching ends. Because the middle section where they overlap is not perfectly the same on each single, you get the transition occurring in slightly different places and at slightly different rates, making for a quite lovely yarn. Uh, a quite lovely blend. I would also say quite lovely yarn and a quite lovely fabric. I totally forgot to photograph the yarn itself, but I photographed the knitted swatch on top of my tint samples of each red so that you can see the undertone of each coming through. I loved playing with this subtle contrast and usually it use it with greens, blue greens with accents of yellow greens are my go-to combo. So it was nice to see it in reds. I'm imagining it as an unusual color combination for some Breton style stripes. I love this. I think it is very cool. So here is another example of creating value, um, shade value scales out of warm and cool reds, blues and yellows from Amanda using black, dark brown and gray. So let me see if I can find them here. So I've started playing with shades. I'm comparing blends of my co-primary palette with black, with a warm chromatic dark, i.e. brown, and with a cool chromatic dark, i.e. gray. So far, I have finished the cool red sets, and it is really interesting to see the cool red shift through red violet in the black and the cool chromatic dark, but retain the red hue with the warm chromatic dark. I don't think the cool chromatic dark is dark enough compared to the red, so it might be better to call that a tone, but I'm sticking with my pre-selected palette through my color play, um, through my color play regardless. So these are her all of her other blues, her warm blues and her cool blues. The cool blues are up top, going through to her warm chromatic dark. And then through to the gray. I think this one's the gray. This might be the black. 
this is the gray and then through to the gray so these are the cool the warm blues and the and the and the cool blues how cool is this one i think this one really shows you a lot and a lot about how the colors change and then here are all of the others so these are all of the reds that i was just talking about more fun with shades and shade adjacent this time warm red comparing cool red sets from earlier with the warm red sets and you can see here she's got her uh, tint scale here in her warm red and then in the previous photo she had her her warm chromatic dark which was the brown the cool chromatic dark which was gray and then the black i'll let these play through incredible she has done so much work so much of these scales these are all two gram samples that she's been creating on her drum card on her blending board I think this shows really that change across from the red to the brown like look at those rich rich colors that you can get those rusts in the brown amazing thanks Amanda so I really wanted to take the opportunity to show you all of Amanda's samples that she did now you arrange them with all of the yellows all of the reds and then all of the blues so I hope that seeing them in sort of like a a slideshow will help you to see what she's done, the amount of work that she's done. And if you have any questions, uh, I know Amanda's very forthcoming with her knowledge. She's an incredible resource. Uh, please don't hesitate to ask her. So um, without further ado, here is all of the work. And I'll read to you what some of what she wrote in the Slack channel. So you can really see how the combinations change, how muted or not the blended colors become. And I'm going to take myself off the screen here so that you can see the full amazingness that is all of this. Okay, so here are her blue experimentations. The photos, um, so this is for the ones where we get to the sets on top. The photos with the one set on top and the other set on the bottom are really interesting to compare. The top set sets are both from cool variants to black, brown, cool gray. And the bottom sets are from a, a warm variant to the black, brown, cool gray. It gives a really interesting visual of how or if a color's hue shifts as it is blended with something cool or something warm. Of, and of course we can do this in the opposite direction with white as Amanda has shown beautifully. These are how the hue shifts are so different as they go across to different chromatic darks. Thank you so much, Amanda, for sharing. 
So as always, share your findings with us either on the Slack channel under hashtag general or hashtag year of color or in the Ravelry group. Be sure to share your projects, your spins and your makes using hashtag wool and spinning so that others can see your stuff as well. And don't hesitate to tag me or Rebecca so that we can see your stuff. Until next time, happy spinning and happy experimenting. Bye everyone. A very special thank you to those who have supported the work here at Woolen Spinning to make it sustainable. Thank you especially to Anne, Sarah, Tori, Amanda, and Lisa. We couldn't do this without you.